They say home is where the heart is. In this series, it's been where the winds are. The King trying to reverse course and take a lead in the series, put himself a game away from yet another final. But in Boston, they do have some hope. That's because they have been winning at home over and over and over again, including the first two in this series, Jason Tatum and company. Hoping to get ahead, we get you set on game time right now. That's the best of one series. Just come out and play the game and uh, put yourself in position win. All right, best of one series or not, regardless, uh, we're pretty excited about what happens tonight, and we're just sitting here, what, 90 minutes away. Welcome to Game Time, the playoff edition here in our studios in Atlanta. Casey Stern, Smitty, Griff. Uh, it, look, guys, after last night, expectations in the bar, Smitty, right now, real, <laughs> real high. You know, I think if you just love this game, Griff and Casey, you would got to love this game five. There's so much, and obviously from both sides. To me, I'm looking for the adjustments from the coaches and how does some of these young guys perform on a big stage. And obviously, can LeBron still have his dominance in big games at the Garden? So I'm looking – well, I'm, oh, I'm dating myself saying at the Garden. Well, this is yeah, not, and which Garden? No, no, not the Garden. <laughs> <laughs> not the Garden Garden. Yeah, okay, okay. Right. Thank you. At least we know that one's in New York. <laughs> well, I, I think it's – I, I agree with you. I mean, I think we should be expecting to see something special from LeBron, and it's almost funny we, we take him for granted at this point. He's had, what, six 40-point games in the playoffs, and you just sort of – I don't know that there's anybody else right now playing sports on any level where you can just say, yeah, I expect greatness tonight again. Right. And it's remarkable. And I think with the exception of the – post-concussion period of time of game two because there's no way he was in his right mind for that second half of that game with the exception of that period of time i i think he's been pretty constant in his so he's supposed to be in the protocol huh you're saying well i don't i don't know if he cleared the protocol right, or not right. but i can tell you i've never seen that look in his face before <laughs> they may have selectively forgotten the protocol <laughs> <laughs> like the they protocol have, is we need lebron right exactly but with the exception yeah. of that 71 to 46 blitz from boston Mm -hmm. It really feels like the last three games, Cleveland started to figure it out a little bit. LeBron, Ty Lue, they're hunting mismatches to some degree. I think Brad's going to adjust. He's masterful in that way as mm -hmm. well. So what I'm excited about seeing now is the adjustments that have been made to this point. You know, in the Houston Golden State series, there's so little margin for error because Golden State's just so good offensively. Cleveland is not going to be a Houston-level defensive team, so they've got to be able to score and outscore Boston. You know, we're going to get into the other series in a second, but I want to use Houston because I think what they learned in this series, guys, is if they're going to have a chance to win, bell to bell, you've got to be at a 10. There is no revving up. To me, it seems like Boston has tried to kind of feel themselves out in the last couple of games. It's got them in trouble. If you really go second quarter on after they were down double digits, it was kind of even the rest of the way. They got it down all the way to seven, eight points at some point early in the fourth quarter, but they got so far behind the eight ball. Are we going to see the Boston we saw in the first two games now, Smitty, where from really from jump, they look like a team ready to win? You know, obviously, if you're the Boston Celtics and any team, you want somebody to stand out and have one of those games. But I think just from a standpoint of adjustments, I thought T. Lou going bigger with Tristan Thompson, just like Griff said, hunting the mismatch with Terry Rozier. He's not a bad defender. He's just so small playing against LeBron James. It tears up your defensive philosophy. So for me is, I'm interested in right now, what's the adjustment from Brad Stevens? Because C. Lou is going to stick with this because it's limited points in the paint for the Boston Celtics. The first two games, they were averaging 55 points. The last two games in Cleveland, I know they weren't at home and they're a young team, but only 36 points in the paint. They need those driving angles. And I think Tristan Thompson has done a good job of both defensively guarding this guy and also being able to guard guys attacking the rim. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up, too. It's a good segue, Griff, because I think everybody talks about the young kids, rightfully so, with Boston. I would argue that Al Horford was their most important player over the first couple of weeks of this playoffs, leading them up to this 2 nothing lead. No it's as good as I've ever seen him play, even though he's been an all-star. How important does he become now? You get on a plane where all of a sudden those kids got blitzed, they lost two in a row. Does he again have to kind of stand in the forefront now for Boston? Well, it's, it's interesting. Al has struggled with two bigs on the floor against Cleveland going back to his time in Atlanta. Love and Tristan, Mozgov and Tristan. 
Anytime they've got two bigs on the court when Al's there, they've really been attacking Al. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big reasons for that is Al is an incredible defender in space. He's going to be their best help defender. He can be very switchy. Mm -hmm. He's going to be one of these guys who guards two up on the perimeter. Well, if they dive Tristan through, Al has to go with Tristan. Now your best wing defender and smartest wing defender is not out there anymore. Right. And so they've effectively taken in his best weapon away from him defensively. And then on the offensive end, because they're keeping big bodies there, he's not able to bully a smaller player when a team likes to play small ball. So I think from a matchup perspective and style making a fight, the two bigs is critical. And the trust level that LeBron has in Tristan and Kevin is epically important. You know, on the other side, we're going to get into a lot about last night's game, including that last play, which we'll dissect later. So we'll leave that for now. I want to talk about Houston because I think a lot of times what happens is we always embrace the negative. It is the era of social media, right? So what does everybody talk about? Wow, Golden State didn't do this, that. Let's start with what Houston did. We were talking about this in the meeting earlier. Have you ever seen a Mike D'Antoni team play with more defensive effort than you saw in the fourth quarter? No, I have not. And I think that's a testament to the P.J. Tuckers, to Chris Pauls. Guys are defensive-minded and also tough you got to give Chris Paul, he's a fantastic point guard, one of my favorites, but what he has done in crunch time for the Houston Rockets, to me, has been phenomenal, Griff. I mean, he willed that win last night, making the right plays. And, yes, all time on highlights, we're going to show points. But I thought just the little things, just communication, him staying engaged, was the reason why the Houston Rockets won that game. And for me, I give them a lot of credit. They're playing small ball at the end of the game, and they're matching the Hampton Five with whatever you want to call the Sugar Land <laughs> Five, and they are doing a good job. And obviously, Andre Iguodala was missing, but Clint Capella is not on the floor a lot down in crunch time. Elephant in the room, whether or not it was fair, Griff, I think a lot of people said Houston's heart is going to be tested in this series. That test they got yesterday, Cleveland has failed in that in finals in the past, where they get on you, they go on that run, Steph started to go off with three threes, they go up double digits, and teams go away. How impressed were you that they didn't in that spot last night? Incredibly so. And to your point about a Mike D'Antoni coach team, while you've never seen a Mike D'Antoni coach team have this level of doggedness, he's never had this many dogs in the locker room either. He's got the talent level defensively to be about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, their biggest key has been that they're able to score enough to keep the defenders on the court. P.J. Tucker was a monster yesterday. Absolutely tremendous for them defensively, keeping balls alive on the offensive end. All of his rebounding effort was really significant. And when they're going to get into you and they're going to deliver a punch, it's most often going to be P.J. that's sort of the mm -hmm. point of the sword. And so I think what they've done a remarkable job of is scoring enough despite the lack of offensive talent on the court, against Golden State, that's really difficult, and it's complicated. And I think Golden State probably had a little bit of complacency. I think they understand now that's a legit 65-win team and a number one seed. All right, let me ask you a question that before, not going to be easy before this series, and probably not now, everybody thought, okay, maybe another rematch is coming. Let's take the two teams that are home, 2-2, two -two, mm -hmm. Boston and you got Houston. Which one with three games left in each series do you have more confidence can win two of those three and take this home? You know, there's just no knock on the Boston Celtics, but I'm more confident in the Houston Rockets. Which uh, is saying something because they're playing Golden State. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Boston Celtics are up against a LeBron James team. You can't say anything, taking away anything with the Warriors. They have fantastic players. But I just think right now these young guys, they played extremely well. I just think right now Cleveland, they might not win this series. I have them winning this series, but – I think Boston is a team, I would say Houston has a better chance. I, I agree with Houston having the better chance, and in large part this is in addition to the pit bulls that Mike has in the locker room, has a lot to do with what Golden State may not. If Iguodala is not healthy or not able to be 100%, I think to a huge degree, and Steve Kerr's talked about this, he's really the brains of the outfit. When they start throwing the ball all over the place, he's really the one that brings them back to center and makes the right play at the right time. He's the glue guy for them. And I think it's critical on the defensive end to not have his versatility. And it might even be more important on the offensive end to just calm things down when things get a little bit out of control as they did at times last night. Last night, for uh, good reason, the NBA kind of took over the interwebs, if you will, because <laughs> of what went on. We could have that again in Game 5. We'll talk more about LeBron and all the 40-plus point efforts, the defense, the passing. I mean, what's been missing? Really nothing from uh, the guy who may be the best ever and 
as good as you're going to find in the secret.